Welcome to Consider This, a youth program where we discuss hot topics, topics that we as young people find interesting and maybe something that we don't normally think about. Today we're going to talk about do you want kids? My name is Quentin, your host, and today we're going to explore the, the possibilities maybe having children one day. Does it affect your life? But before we consider that, take a look at this. Every three seconds a baby is born, and out of every 1,000 births, 32.2 of them are twins. How you get 0.2 of a baby, I don't know. But anyway, with 86,400 seconds in a day, that's like 31,582 babies every 24 hours. For every baby, you need 125 milliliters of milk every 2 to 3 hours for 6 months. That's 219 liters of milk. And imagine rubbing out winds for at least 20 minutes every time. And feeding translates into diapers. That's 7,300 diapers by the time that baby turns two. And changing them adds up to over three 40 hour work weeks per year. And to top that, baby will cost you between 400 and 750 hours of sleep in the first year. Can you imagine when baby is a teenager? By the time baby goes to preschool, your attention will be required with endless why questions every four minutes or 210 times a day, if you're lucky. And moms are likely to spend a dedicated 2.7 hours on childcare, but dad only gets off with 1.2 hours per day. But even that's a lot of time when you're still young and you want to have fun besides needing a lot of money and even more patience. So seriously, when you look at the cold hard facts, are you ready to have kids? Before we uh, go on with our program to consider this hot topic, I want to introduce my panel today. How's it, Kizia? Hi, how are you, Quentin? I'm good, are you? Good. And then we have Paul. Paul, how are you doing? Good, Quentin, how are you? I'm good, thanks. And then we have also Audrey here, who's a teacher, by the way. How are you doing, Audrey? Good, thanks. <laughs> now, guys, to be honest, kids, you know, diapers, <laughs> lots of money, kids, uh, just stuff lying all over the house. Your house is a mess. Do you really want kids? I, I, I don't think I really don't. Uh, think about it. Do you guys really want kids? <laughs> Maybe not now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I need to get married first. Okay, so that's a good thing to get married first, yes. okay? Yeah. But, and we as young people, we never think about this to have kids. I mean, that's a long-term goal. But can we prepare for it now to have kids? I think, yeah, this is the right time because you cannot start thinking of having kids after marriage because, okay, I mean, I don't know, but I think just this is just the right time to start thinking about it like I have been thinking about it and I've concluded that I don't want any biological kids, maybe I'll adopt one. That's <laughs> what I've concluded, but okay. it should depend with um, your spouse as well, because she might not want kids or... So, I and just think we have to consider that. There are other implications. There's financial, um, yeah. financial things that you have to think about. I mean, a child is a very expensive commodity. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to put it in, 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 in check. You have to at least have a job so that, you know, when your child sneezes, it's a million <laughs> bucks, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Mm. But um, I think it's, a, it's the right time to get ready. Maybe we should say character building okay. as yeah. for now. And I agree because I don't think money is the main issue. I think your character <laughs> yeah. would be. So, like so to, to have kids, we normally look at the negative things. Oh, lots of money, lots of work. But what is the positive side? And does the positive side outweigh the negative side? What would you guys say? Uh, Is there a positive side? I think so. Uh, just like I looking at myself, I'm a kid. And uh, I think <laughs> I've, been a, <laughs> I've been a blessing to my parents and my mom's happy sometimes. Just sometimes. To them. <laughs> <laughs> right, sometimes. Maybe that out from, yeah, they can always be happy, you know, uh, you mean. So somehow um, it brings joy to the parents. Uh, look at Abraham. Wow. Uh, the, when uh, he got Isaac, he loved Isaac so much and he waited upon the promise. So it brings fulfillment. It, it helps us to understand God's plan for us. We are God's children. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it helps us to love and to understand the love of God as well. Okay. Udi? Yeah, well, I want to say the same thing. It's like 
and when I teach and when I give classes to kids, then you could, oh, you could just, you want to kill them sometimes. <laughs> you really do. But then when you, when, even in that situation, you start to see yourself as being the parent, as being the, the God figure almost. And you start to see how God might feel about us. Yeah. And, and sometimes when I get angry, then I think, Yo, what must God think of me when I rebel against him or when I do bad things? And even if that's the only thing that I've learned in education so far, that's meant the most to me. It's just to understand God better. So you, you, you can see the relationship of the father and the son. Yes. And you can kind of, it, it makes, makes more sense of how, what God went through when he gave his only son, mm. don't you think? Mm. Yeah. But, yes. Kizia. Youthfully, I'm talking from a youthful perspective. It's very scary to have a whole human being banking on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For everything that they do, they come to you. You know, yeah. anything goes wrong, I run to my mother. I ask her the f and I expect the best answer from her, you know. So for me, it's a bit scary yeah. that I have to have a child and everything they do um, must bank on me. But it comes back to a Christian point of view where everything we do, we need to run to the Father, yeah. yes. you know. So yes. um, it, it, I don't know, it's very confusing. <laughs> okay, no, but no, here's a question. So we want kids and we know there's a positive attribute or a positive side to having kids. But now, how can we as young people today, we don't have kids now, but how do we prepare, right, mm. to having kids in, say, five years, 10 years, 20 years? Well, I think um, on that one, um, we have to prepare ourselves first by the character we have built ourselves. Mm. Uh, the way we are living right now determines on, on the way that we want our kids uh, I mean, the road that we want them to tread on. Just like us, most of us, uh, we are just doing the same things that our fathers, our mothers did. Yeah. Um, there's one person who said, if a person is not making up his parents' dreams, he's uh, making up their mistakes. Okay. Thank you. We will continue with this hot topic right after the break. So we saw the need for relevant Bible-based media aimed at youth and young adults that could counteract the effect of destructive messages in media, like violence and immorality. Not just in one city, one country or one continent, but the whole world. So how do you create something real, wholesome and get it to be available not just somewhere, but everywhere? Two heads are better than one. So if you take a few heads from a number of countries and transcend the cultural differences to isolate the real issues, you can use a collaboration of mission-minded individuals who work in television, film, radio, the internet and other forms of media to make a tangible difference. When you connect individuals, ministries, organizations and companies globally who share the same vision, you exponentially increase their sphere of influence. So why not connect, create? and counteract.